welcome guys in this new video on medical channel and welcome in this new video in the game engine series now in the previous video we have been talking about event handler and we used our event handler class our input handler class to move our player around the screen you can see the result right here we can simply move our player and everything's quite smooth you can see and that, that was pretty great now in this video we're gonna be dealing with time with the delta time and we're gonna be creating our time class our, which is gonna handle the delta time and all that kind of stuff you can imagine about time there are two ways of making animation and movement in, in the game development there is um, one way when people use frame rate you know how much frame your computer can render per second the so-called FPS that way it actually works but there is a lot of problem with that because if I took if I take for example this program which is running right now on a 60 frame uh, per second uh, screen and give it to someone who actually has 30 frame per, per second then um, the ratio won't be the same you know everything's gonna be moving a little bit slower or according to the to the, to the frame rate of, of, of that monitor things are gonna be running differently but we don't want that actually we want a program that can run everywhere the same way no matter if you have a 60 frame or 30 frame we just want to have something that could be standard and that's what we're going to be dealing uh, in this video so let's get started now we're going to be starting by creating our timer class so just go ahead and create a new class so i'm going to call it timer so you can call it whatever you want clock whatever it doesn't matter remember to create a new folder for it since it's a new component a new system actually it's important to create a new folder for that because we want to keep our code organized so that we don't mess up later because there is a lot of things coming and if we don't make sure that things are organized then we won't make it through so make sure you have a cpp file and a header file that's important yes so i'm gonna be closing some stuff right here I need them actually so the first thing we're gonna be doing right now is to define some couple of important things first of all I'm gonna remove this destructor I like to use so I don't want to have too much code eyes we make our constructor private since we want to make this class um, uh, static so we don't want to have more than two instances of this class um, all over the code all over the program we want to make sure we only have one timer which actually provide the delta time that is going to be used everywhere to update our components that's important so that's why we need to put this guy private so if we didn't have to make this uh, like like this like singleton class then we didn't have to define this that wasn't necessary but right now you need to define we also have to define some important component now we are we're talking here about uh, the delta time um, we still need first of all to define our static instance rather make it right now or I'll forget it later so instance which is the guy that we're using right here to make this class static but we also need two other component we need the delta time which is going to be used around the code everywhere we're going to be uh, creating a get function to access that delta time since we're going to be calculating the delta time we need also to have the value of the last time because the delta time is the time that occurs between two events and for that we need to know the first time and the actual time so that's why we want to create another component called last time last time not time time so we also need to create like a method right here we're gonna be calling this void tick so I just use this name because SDL actually has SDL get tick and I just want to use something similar to that but it doesn't matter anyway. and we also want to define 
inline function float get delta time so this function will simply return our delta time value and we could give it to other function and they will use that to update the animations or whatever I want to animate at the time that is wrong so, delta time I haven't forgotten anything like, now we have everything defined but we still need to define two important constants right here so I've been talking about this thing about uh, frame per second all that kind of stuff we want to define like a, a target frame rate that we want to have for our engine so since almost all monitor out there have a frame rate for 60 frame per second we're going to be using that as target frame but you can still use 30 15 if you want whatever depends on the comp uh, the on the device we're using actually because if someone is going to be creating game for for like uh, i don't know ps3 whatever then you have to check out and know how uh, this actually works is it 60 or is it more and all that kind of stuff that's important to know so we have 60 but we also need another constant i'm gonna be uh, telling you why we need this in a couple of seconds so we call it target delta time that's important and we're gonna be defining 1.5 so 1.5 this is like 1.5 millisecond i'm coming to that in a couple of seconds now we have everything defined right here we need to move over to our cpp file this can be removed and make sure you find this guy right here i don't need to define it if i don't have to write code in it now let's insert our method we have one yeah that's true so this is the guy we want to write the code in now the first thing we need to do before starting writing in the line of code is to define our static member timer instance is equal to null pointer we want to make sure it starts with a null pointer because if you don't do that you got some trouble so delta time is on it it's going to be equal to now include sdl because we're going to be using the the get tick function so we need to include it. I want to get the value of the time since SDL, since SDL was initialized and we're going to be using that to calculate uh, the value between um, I'm going to be showing you in the main in the main book in a couple of seconds so last time so as I said the delta time is the difference of time between two events so this is the time since SDL was initialized and this is the last time we had so actually now we want to make sure this is going to be uh, scaled down to our target target uh, frame rate so we're going to be dividing by thousand make it be millisecond we don't want to have a second value we need millisecond because mm -hmm. that's more, more precise for our calculation and all the kind of stuff we might so now we calculate the delta time it's important for us to set a limit for the value of the delta time if you remember the target delta time that i told you to define it's because of this so i want to make sure the delta time never go over 1.5 milliseconds that's important because according to the computer you might be using this could get crazy and things will start flying up flying around on the screen and you won't even see anything that's why you want to make sure that if the value of the delta time is over this value right here then we, you know we scale it down we keep that value down to this target to this target value right here that's important so we want our animation to always have like a consistent view you know that sometimes the player is running faster and slower and all that kind of stuff we don't want to have that and at the end we want to make sure the last time is going to be equal to the new time last time, last time yeah. it's going to be equal to sdl get tick get the tick again find it 
now we've created our timer class we need to test it if it's working now let's first of all move to our main.cpp there we need to include our timer so we include it and here we're going to be calling our tick function get instance so we're going to tick right here something missing maybe check tick function find it right here everything is all right everything is all right Right. Oh, ah, I said engine. It should be timer. Timer get instance and we take. Now delta time is gonna be calculated every time the loop is running around. So the delta time is actually the value that the computer takes from here till here. So from the beginning of this loop till the end, that's gonna be the value of the delta time. We're gonna be calculating that over and over and give that to all components so that they could be you know animated or whatever they, want, they might want to do with that time so the rigid body for example to have a smooth movement you need that time system that's what we're doing right now now switch over to your game engine to your engine c.cpp there include this timer we just create so in the update function right here, we wanna add, we wanna call our get delta time. So we get the instance, no, get instance first, and get delta time. So we wanna define it and start it inside of a value. And that delta time is gonna be passed through. So if you see right here, we have this uh, 8 0 0.8 value which is given that's the value we're actually using right here to make our animation on the player but we want to have like a timing we want something that is uh, based on the computer system on the system on the cpu we don't want to have like a value like this because if i have this value on some computer this might bring some problem because the delta time variate from computer to computer but the way it's gonna be handled internally to make animation is the same. So they're gonna be providing, they're gonna be giving the same result, but the delta time might be different from computer to computer. So that's why we wanna have something that could actually fit with the system. So in this value, we just give it right here, and we wanna check the result right now and see if it's working. So we have it given back through the update function right here. So let me go ahead and close this. And try to compile this in the, the animation is smoother so let's try to render the value and see what we actually have right now so you can see the value of the delta time right here and uh, oh, like oh, we're not getting over so you see the value sometimes try to go over 1.5 but we keep it there that's why we see sometimes we have this value but Normally it variates from 0 0.5 to 1.5. That's you can deal with that. That's okay. That's perfect. And that's actually what we were looking for. So that's all for this video, guys. Thank you for watching videos on Medico channel. Consider supporting me on Patreon and there is more videos coming. And uh, yeah, ciao.